If you have clicked on this video, you saw peppermint mead and your interest was piqued. And it should be because it's a really kind of fun mead recipe that's odd off the wall. One that I have lots of experience with. Many years ago, coming on six years ago now, I made a peppermint or candy cane mead recipe. I did it for the first time. It was like mead number eight in my arsenal. I uh, spent some time on it and I enjoyed the first iteration. And so I invested more time, came up with a, I'm gonna call it a quote, final recipe, which I'll put a card up for you. And uh, there's a video on it. If you wanna learn how to make it, how I make it, it does use true candy canes. Now, many of you are gonna sit here and say, well, can you just make it without the candy canes? Can you sub them out and just get peppermint extract? In truth, I think you could. I think there's probably a way to, to skirt the line, not have to use the candy canes side. However, it is so much more fun when you use the candy canes because it adds to the adventure of this mead. So in front of me today, I have a slew of adventures in candy cane uh, peppermint meads. So I have an original bottle. It even has an OG on the bottom, which is how I labeled all of the original batch that I made. So this is that very bead number eight, the one that I talked about, it's right in front of me. It's been aging for over five years now, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> so um, this is the original. This is a version I made with candy canes that had green stripes in them as well. So it's got a green tint, but it's still it's candy cane, peppermint. And then this is from a friend of mine, Shelly, who is on my Discord, a prominent, awesome mead maker. She made a maple syrup and candy cane mead version with a fun label on it. And I've been holding onto this bottle to open it, of course, but I wanted to open it and kind of tandem and talk about this mead recipe and why this, when this video is coming out might be appropriate for you to start the candy cane mead. So I'm posting this video probably a week and a half after Christmas time has rolled around and stores that had lots of candy canes are going to be ready or going to be ready, going to be trying to get rid of candy canes. A couple disclaimers. You don't want to buy the regular round peppermints. Those don't work. That is not a candy cane. I don't know what it is about the oils or whatever it's in them. It does not work very well. You want the true candy cane that you have to unwrap. And you want a lot of them. In that recipe card, I'll show it again, I use quite a few pounds of candy cane. I'm sure some scientist can figure out how much peppermint extract and sugar and all those things uh, would that, that would equal to, so you could just sub that out. However, the fun, again, of buying all those candy canes, unwrapping them, and having this experience is, makes it more unique. So this first one is my green version. Green candy canes. Ooh, I got some, some leaves and stuff in here. You can kind of see that hue. It's hard to tell with the yellow back there. There you go, maybe. Just a little bit green. Green kind of wore off, but. I believe this is from 2020, so this is about two and a half years old. Another reason this mead recipe needs time is because, or you should start it now, is because it needs time. More than likely, when you make this, it will not be ready only because of something with the candy canes and the peppermint extract and all of those things, it won't be ready for nine months. And I hate saying that personally. I hate when people tell me that because I wanna drink my mead sooner, but this one truly does take time. In that recipe, I use peppermint tea and candy canes and some sugar to back sweeten with sometimes, or sugar honey to back sweeten with since it's a mead. And that's pretty good. I mean, the green candy cane sign doesn't really change anything. It just changed the color. This one definitely has more youth than I know this one will have. So that's kind of a reason you want to start looking at those candy canes is because it's going to be a while before you can drink it. I'm now trying Susan's, who was Shelly, as I talked about earlier, her maple and candy cane version. Oh yeah, this the nose on this is way more prominent candy cane like this one that I'm used to. And that sweetness from the maple is great. She definitely went a little less sweet than mine is, but that doesn't make it any more, any different necessarily. The peppermint is still prominent. The maple syrup element really adds some richness to it. So that's a fun variable. This is fantastic. I haven't had somebody 
riff on my recipe before and she riffed on it with some maple syrup and it's really fun. So that's another reason you can make this. It's There's uh, not just one way to make it. Of course, you can make the original. You can also add maple syrup. You can also add cacao nibs if you want to have a chocolate candy cane or chocolate peppermint sort of vibe as well. The recipe itself is just super fun. And I am um, pushing it again because of the timeline of when this is coming out. Here's a five year, six, almost six year old version of it right here. The original, number eight. This has a lot more um, round, soft nose. Maybe less uh, pepperminty, minty. It's really made way for the honey to pop up. Here we go. Yeah, that's so interesting. It's because that honey character has really risen. As this mead matures and ages, that um, peppermint profile is way up here at the start, and then the honey's here, and then they kind of start meeting in the middle. And then as more time passes, it turns into this. The peppermint mellows out and the honey character stays the same. And that's what's happening here. I think it's really good. Is this mead for everybody? No, there's gonna be a slew of people, a lot of people who say, peppermint mead, why would you ever do that? You don't have to do it. It's just kind of fun. I enjoy making lots of mead from regular fruited traditional meads all the way to the extremes of peppermints, candy meads, and those things. I want you to have fun with mead making. What's so important here is that, one, it's, it's great to be competitive. It's great to make mead in hopes to go and win awards and do those things. But also, it's more important for you to make mead that's fun, that will invite people into the hobby. If this is uh, someone's cup of tea, make it. Make it and share it with them and say, hey, I make a peppermint mead. I know you love peppermints. I don't know why you know that about somebody, but I know you love peppermints. So try this mead. And you never know, they might start making mead themselves. So check out this recipe card on screen. Let me know if you've made this mead yourself and how you liked it. And uh, I would be curious to see if you go and make this mead, how you like it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy holidays. Go buy some candy canes because there's a lot left in the stores. Cheers.